The house I currently live in with my roommate was built in the 70s. It's a pretty standard development block fair within the city. Brick, two stories, creepy unfinished basement, you know the kind. We've been there for a couple of years and since the first month, weird stuff has happened. When we first moved in, both my roommate and I were pretty creeped out by the basement. It's just an unfinished cement affair. The wooden door didn't even have a lock, so there was a latch hook you needed to use if you wanted it to stay shut. I work nights and my roommate worked day shift, so we only saw each other over the weekends and communicated mostly through texts. One night while I was at work, my roommate texted me, Are you at home? Puzzled, I replied, No, why? He informed me that he left his room for something in the kitchen and every light in the house was on. It was 2am and he was in bed. So, weird, but I sort of chalked it up to him forgetting to turn the lights out. Well, skip ahead a couple of nights. I got home from work and made my way upstairs. Lights in the house were out as I used my phone as a flashlight. After changing, I came downstairs to fill my water bottle up. The kitchen and living room lights were on. Well, that was weird. I jokingly indicated gratitude to the ghost for helping me see downstairs. Well, apparently it liked that, because every so often the light in the kitchen and living room will flip on by themselves after I get home from work. It doesn't stop there, though. We've heard footsteps running up and down the stairs. Not like big old stomping stuff, just like running, light running, like a kid. It was around this time I decided the ghost, if that is what it was, was probably a kid who died in the house's past. The area wasn't always safe, so it made sense in my mind. This is sort of reinforced by the fact that this particular spirit likes Cartoon Network. The TV in the living room, at least once every week or so, will turn on by itself to Cartoon Network. Doesn't matter what channel or input it was on when we turn it off. Sometimes it will do so in the middle of the night and one of us will hear it from upstairs. Sometimes it occurs in the middle of the day when one of us is home in the kitchen or something. Oh, and did I mention they like to hide stuff? Like I'm fairly certain they think it's a game. The remotes will vanish and end up in weird places, like on the bookshelf behind books or behind the TV or under the curtains near the window. The remote for the TV in my room ended up in the garage one time. Strange. The spirit also seems to like to move my water bottle around. I sleep with it next to my bed and I found it on my dresser, behind my computer, in my closet, and even in the hallway a couple of times. My door is locked at night. They also seem to like my roommate's shoes as they seem to vanish more frequently than anything else in his room. The spirit, or whatever it is, seemed to be able to open doors on its own, like it's flipped the latch on the door to the basement a dozen times and just creaked the thing open. We've started just leaving the door to the basement open since it happened so frequently. Finally, and this may seem cliche, but it seems to make rooms colder when it's present. It's only occurred a handful of times, but the most prominent was when my roommate was having a party. I think the spirit was scared itself, which, to me, lends more credence to it being a child. I was home and in my room upstairs just trying to relax after a long week of work. My roommate was downstairs, music was bumping, and there were a lot of people. I heard someone run up the stairs and knock on my door. I just assumed it was one of my roommate's friends coming to say hi, as they usually did. I opened my door and there was no one there. I didn't hear anyone turn tail like they were pranking me, so... I jokingly said something along the lines of, Oh, are they too loud? Well, you can come in for the night. And you know what? I think they did. The room got colder, despite this being in the middle of the summer. Nothing moved or was messed with, but I had to put on a sweatshirt and sweatpants. I just flipped on Cartoon Network. The next morning, the room was normal. It hasn't happened again with future parties, I think the spirits might have toughed it out in the basement, but for one night, they seemed like they wanted some place that was relatively quiet where they could just watch cartoons. I could totally relate. I don't know if I'm reading too much into this or if my imagination is just overactive, but I know weird stuff happens at our house and I can't really explain it. I just try to be positive and open-minded about it. My third roommate isn't, as far as I can tell, malevolent. Just a bit mischievous, it seems.
I started renting my home 11 years ago. Before my roommate at the time and myself rented it, a family that was originally from Serbia rented it. Both the mother and daughter read coffee grains and tea leaves, and they also made potions. Of course, they didn't call them that. The homeowner had a falling out with them and they were given 30 days to leave. The homeowners are my parents and it was our rental property. I came with my parents and we started cleaning the mess that they had made. That's when I found it. It was what looked like a little doll made with a sock. It had brown yarn hair and a little dress. It had a strange smell to it and it looked like it had been burned. I tossed it honestly because it gave me a bad feeling but also because we were trying to get things cleared out to rip out carpets and paint. Later that day I was taking the trash out to the communal dumpster when my brother snatched the doll out of the trash. We had also joked the woman who lived there was a witch. We cut it open and it was filled with this nasty smelling dirt. My brother insisted on burning it. He also told me a story that the woman had told him that witches often change into moths. Fast forward six months and I'm living in the house and weird things are starting to happen. My roommate Joe and I are chilling in the upstairs living room. It's me, his girlfriend, himself, and a friend of mine. The fireplace was off, the gas to the fireplace is off, and it was September in the desert so there was no reason we needed a fire. We were sitting there laughing and suddenly the fireplace lights up and we hear a popping noise. I immediately put it out, we figured it's a glitch and we go about our business. However, radios start turning on in the middle of the night. TVs turn on. One day, the disposal turns on when my roommate is washing dishes. The switch is clear across the counter and he's all alone. I tell my mom, who is more skeptical than Dana Scully, and she writes it off as me smoking too much and reading my stories, horror novels. However, she tells me if it bothers me that much to go ahead and tell a priest. I do tell our local priest and he comes in and blesses the house. After that, nothing at all. Joe moves out, as him and his girlfriend are pregnant and they're about to get married. I needed a new roommate and my brother moves in. About this time, he starts to have really bad dreams about the former residence. The woman's daughter was his age and he starts to feel like something is drawing him to her. Meanwhile, weird stuff starts happening again and one night I wake up to screaming. I run upstairs. My brother is standing in the kitchen and there are literally hundreds of huge moths in the house. We let a good friend sage our house after that. My brother's thoughts went away and his dreams stopped but weird stuff still happens from time to time and we still occasionally get swarms of moths. Six months ago, I was at my partner's house and realized I left my bag in the car, which was parked on the street. As I'm walking toward it, I realized the backlight has been smashed and there was damage to the rear panels too. I was so angry, wondering if someone had left a note or just done a runner. Then, as I'm walking toward it, the damage just flickered and disappeared like a mirage on a road on a hot day. I walked right up to it and ran my hand over the spot nothing. Perfectly fine tail light and panels, not a scratch. I put it down to a vivid imagination or the cold I had. I thought no more of it for half an hour until there's a knock on the door. It's the neighbor. I'm so sorry. I just hit your car backing out of my driveway. Now, totally freaked out, I head outside and the exact same spot I had seen about a half hour before was now damaged taillights smashed, same panels dented and scratched. To make sure I wasn't going crazy, I asked when it happened. He responds, just now as I was backing out of the driveway. I saw the damage half an hour before it happened. My parents' house, the one I currently live in, has always been a bit strange. They bought it from a neighbor circa 1996 or 97, not long after the house was built, if I remember correctly. I wasn't born until 1999, so I wasn't around when they moved in. We live in Loxahatchee, Florida, if that helps with any of the spiritual history of the area. 
Ever since I could remember, this house had been very strange. Something's not right about it. When I was little, sometimes I could feel cold hands clawing at my back while I was trying to sleep. I would hear whispers. Things would fall off my shelves, and I'd run screaming and crying to the safety of my half-asleep parents in the dead of night, who would tell me that it was only a nightmare and let me sleep in their room. Friends would spend the night and the next day tell me they saw and heard things throughout the night, like crying, laughter, footsteps, and some say they saw human figures in the mirror and were too scared to come back. And one night, me and my friend were chased around the house by an RC car that had no remote control or even a battery present to power it. As I got older, the sort of strange vibe that came with living in this house changed a little bit. I began seeing apparitions, and at one point, things got so bad I was put on medication for insomnia because the nightmares I was getting were so bad I was borderline hysterical for lack of sleep. The nightmares and apparitions stuck around for years, all the way from 8th grade to 11th grade, until suddenly one day, everything seemed to stop. My house was silent, until now. It all started again a couple of weeks ago. I heard banging noises at one of my windows while playing video games with a friend, so I called my coworker and told him to drive by my house on his way home from work, and if he saw a person there, to immediately call the cops and I'd worry about waking my parents. He saw nothing. The noises stopped after that. Then things got weirder. One night, the air felt kind of sinister in a way, like I got this sinister vibe one night while playing on my phone. My dog came in and whined at me and I told her to go lay on her bed, but instead she stood guard outside my door that night and growled until the sun came up. The night after that, the smoke detectors would randomly go off, even though there was no fire, and when I told my parents, they told me the smoke detectors weren't even on that night. Things were quiet after that until I think Monday night. I had a creepy dream about my house. I can't remember what the details were. I kind of shrugged it off as just a nightmare. Then Tuesday night, I had this really vivid dream about a creepy radio in the RV that sits in the driveway. There were odd frequencies and a woman's screaming voice coming from the radio, and my mom told me to shut it off, but something about the radio was so evil that I started trembling and crying and begging my mom not to make me touch the radio before I woke up feeling this sinking feeling of dread in my stomach. I brushed it off and went back to sleep. Wednesday went fine except for a sinking feeling I got when I walked near the RV while leaving for work until nightfall. I felt like something was watching me last night. I tried shrugging it off and took a shower and got ready for bed, but the feeling was so strong that I almost woke my parents up and told them about everything. I decided against it and planned on distracting myself with positive vibes until I was tired enough to sleep. When I finally did, I had another dream about my house, but I don't remember it being scary or creepy at all. I think I was just walking around the house. I woke up feeling tired and drained today. Which brings us to me sitting here behind my computer screen at a loss for what to do. I want to tell my parents. My mom is really religious, even though I'm not nearly as religious as she is. But if I told her I felt a negative energy in her house, she would brush it off as me stressed or tired or paranoid. I guess believing in God doesn't necessarily mean you believe in all of the paranormal or supernatural. I've tried at least salting my windowsill and bedroom doorway since that's where the activity seems to be the highest, and it worked for a while. But in the long run, I ended up with a bug infestation that I had to explain to my angry parents, and that didn't go over very well. I would burn sage or something, but if my mom found out I was doing any cleansing rituals, she disowned me after making me read the entire Bible. I'm at a loss for what to do. This thing has been coming after me my whole life, and not a soul believes me unless they experience it for themselves, and then they want nothing to do with me and my haunted house. I don't know who to go to. I'm so alone. This is one of my sister's paranormal encounters. Keep in mind she is not the type to lie about these things for attention or anything like that, and has always been extremely susceptible to paranormal occurrences. 
She told me the story a while back, and after reading some of these, I thought I would like to share, along with a few other creepy happenings. She said one day she came home and settled in as usual. She walked past the bathroom and the door was open. She said her other sister was in the bathroom straightening her hair, a common and not as unusual occurrence. She said hi to her and our sister said hey back. She continued about her day at home until she realized she had not seen her sister in the house since. She called for her but there was no answer. She couldn't find her. Finally, she decided to call her on her cell phone and she asked where she went. She was at school all morning working on a paper and was never home while my sister was. Now the weirdest part is, is that we have all individually as a family seen each other when in reality we are somewhere else or in another part of the house. We have heard each other's voices while we are not home. In addition, my sister once came home from work at night and claimed to have heard my parents and I outside. I was much younger and was wondering why we were taking forever to come inside. She looked out the window and we were not there because we had gone to see a movie and had been gone for a while. Things also tend to disappear into our creepy basement that we never go into, and the light is also turned on, and when I ask my mom, dad, or sisters if they had gone down there, they tell me they never were. The last and probably most unsettling one, in my opinion, is when it was about 3 a.m. and our neighbor called my sister to ask why my dad was just chilling by the back door since it was so late. We told him that my dad was asleep and had been so for hours. We asked what the guy looked like, and my neighbor said he looked like a tall, dark figure in a trench coat and a fedora-type hat. In the 13 years I've been living here, I am not sure exactly what goes on in this house. All I know is that, although I never feel particularly threatened, I always feel like I'm being watched. So let's go back to the year 2002. This is the time by which I had learned to speak quite well and I could speak complete sentences by then. Now, when I was a kiddo, for some reason, I didn't get along very well with my dad. Imagine a three-year-old telling his dad that he hates him and that he's not his daddy. Wild, right? I mean, I had just started speaking complete sentences then. One day, during one such occasion while I was throwing a fit at my dad, something happened. Something that made my mom question everything that she thought about the paranormal. One day, dad came back home from work and it was clear that he was in a bad mood. He came up to give me a good night hug, but instead of wishing him a good night, I said, Stop trying to hug me. You're not even my daddy, Papa. I called him Papa. My dad laughed. Well, Papa and Daddy are the same things, he said. No, they aren't. You are my Papa. But you are my daddy. My daddy doesn't live there. He lives in New York, and he's a pilot. He flies big planes and makes lots of money. And I need to see Kristen immediately. She's probably waiting for me at home and getting all worried about me. I yelled. Mom said Dad's face went white. Who's Krista, Nathan? Where does she live? He asked. Kristen is love, wife, and she lives here. I said, pointing at my heart. And good night now. I switched off the lights and went to sleep, pulling the blanket over my head, not in a mood to answer any more of my dad's questions, I guess. There was no way a three-year-old little fella knew all of that. It left them confused beyond crazy levels of confusion. Well, you're probably wondering what all of this means, right? Well, fast forward to 2017. Just so you know, I get lucid dreams way too much. One night I was sleeping. Well, not exactly sleeping. Lucid dreaming. It was a weird dream. I was in a huge white hall, alone, all by myself and it was so peaceful in there, so utterly peaceful. Jacob, a female voice, so beautiful and soothing it's beyond words, called me from behind. I turned around, and there in front of me was standing a girl in a yellow dress, a girl so beautiful she was nothing less than an angel, and she had the most beautiful smile on her face. She had an aura about her that made me feel so happy and loved. Kristen. The words escaped my mouth. 
You remember me, Jacob? She teared up. I couldn't speak at that point. I just stared at her. I'm waiting for you, Jacob. I'm so lonely. Please come home. She reached out her hands as she said that. I woke up to the sound of my alarm. Five in the morning. I tried to reach for the alarm to shut it down. My whole body hurt so much I couldn't move. I was burning. Burning hot. I called out for my sis whose room was just next to mine. The last thing I remember was my sister walking in through the door and the next thing I remember was waking up in a bathtub filled with cold water. I had passed out from a fever of 105 degrees and, and dad put me in the cold water bath to bring down my body temp ASAP to prevent the fever from getting to my head. Kristen probably came to take me back with her. Just one of the hundreds of paranormal experiences I've had. You can't run from them when it runs in your family. My dad is sensitive too, and he probably got it from his mom, my grandma. To all the people out there who have or think they have extrasensory abilities, have you ever experienced a spirit rot phenomena? What I mean by it is when people die... Sometimes they aren't able to cross over to whatever there is in the afterlife, let's say, spiritual realm. Their souls get stuck in our world. It's like a fish out of water situation. The longer a fish stays out of water, the more it dies, then rots. In a somewhat similar manner, souls that get stuck here and aren't able to cross over keep degenerating. Their aura, their aura continues to deteriorate. Why am I saying all of this? Now... Let's get to the story. Like all my other stories in this sub, it's a first-hand experience. You all might be wondering how. Like, in a movie, I keep getting all of these terrible paranormal situations. Well, the thing is, I've seen stuff since, like, forever. But the time period between 2015 to 2017 was the most. That was when I got hexed. And that's when all Hades broke loose. And I know y'all surely want to know that story and I won't be disappointing you. All the events in this story took place between the year 2012 to 2015. That was when we moved into a new house. Most of my stories are from this house. Let me give you a quick intro to this house. It was a huge house, five generations old, and had a history of losing tenants quite quickly. None of them stayed for longer than a year. Sounds suspicious, right? Well, let me tell you a thing that will immediately clear all suspicions regarding this house. There was no rent at all. Just water and electricity bills, nothing else. This and caring for the two not-so-elderly couple that lived there. Old fellas were in late 60s and all you had to do for them was cook for them and remind them to take their medicine. No rent. Crazy, right? Parents immediately moved in. I'll save the other stories of this house for later, but right now let's stick to the story of the lady in black. I first saw the lady in black on my second night in that house. I woke up to get a water bottle from the fridge and on my way to the kitchen, I saw a silhouette standing in the main shutter door and peeping in. Another quick info about the house. We have a huge shutter door as the main door, then another door that led to the central hall. All the rooms in the stairs of the first floor branched out from the central hall. Between central hall's door and the main shutter door, there was a courtyard area. I stopped when I saw the silhouette, walked to the door, opened it, then switched on both the lights outside the house and the courtyard light such that the light would shine upon and light the silhouette from both front and back. But the thing was, despite light being shown upon that silhouette from both sides, it was still a silhouette, just a black shadow. Suddenly, a... how to describe it? A wave of energy ran through my entire body. So much energy that I blacked out and my breathing stopped for a moment and I fell on my knees. It lasted for about four seconds. What do you guys call such attacks? In my case, usually a paranormal activity or event follows after these attacks. After I got my senses back, I looked up and the silhouette was gone. I tried to brush it off as just an extra intrusive neighbor and went back in my house. But I knew what I had just seen. And it was a neighbor for sure, just not alive. I decided to name her Lady in Black because of how dark the silhouette was. 
the blackest of blacks I've ever seen. I kept seeing the lady quite frequently after that. Since dad lived in another state, he is a believer in the paranormal and sensitive to stuff as well, and mom didn't believe in all of that crap. I never told anyone about the lady in black. But one thing was quite common with each encounter I had with her. Disease. I'd get sick every single time. High fever, nausea, diarrhea. Just imagine how bad her aura was. So much negative energy, but there was something weird about her. Like, she was dead and had a negative aura. But she never really attacked me or anything. During all the sightings, all she did was just stare at me, and that too from a distance. It was weird. Up until that point, I had seen dark spirits... Lady in Black, despite being one, didn't actually act like one. The reason? Man, I'm in tears right now just by typing this and reliving it all over again. Let's jump to the end of the story now. May of 2015, a summer afternoon. I was alone at the house, and I'm telling you, I love sleeping when I'm alone and have nothing to do. So I just locked the other doors and windows and made myself comfy in the bed and went to sleep. I have mentioned it in my last post as well that I am a frequent lucid dreamer and today as well it was a lucid dream. I dreamt of falling, falling in a black endless hole that just didn't seem to end. My heart was pumping hard then suddenly, boom, I fell down and woke up in a white room. Don't get confused, I was still asleep in real life. I got up off the floor and looked up and man, I'm sure I let out a shriek in real life as well. Lady in black, right in front of me in my dream, I immediately backed off. Who are you and why are you here? Why do I see you all the time and what do you want from me? I yelled at her. Help. She came forward and reached out to me with her extra long hands and touched my hands. What I saw next was painful to watch. You know why I hate this power that I have? I have to sometimes see really disturbing things. It's not a choice. It just happens. And all I can do is just watch. And I saw a woman being torn apart. Yes, it was very, very detailed and graphic. And then buried. Where did it all happen? The empty plot of land right next to her house. I saw the exact spot where she was buried. Unfortunately, I couldn't recognize the two men that did all of that to her, which was a huge regret. I wish the two of them die or died the most painful deaths and rot for all they did to that woman. The dream ended and I woke up. I was soaked in sweat despite the AC switched on and working just fine. I now knew the story of the lady in black. She was most probably a nomad. We used to have a special market in our town once every year where people from nearby towns and Nomads would come to sell various things, which was the reason that there were no police FRIs or anything on the internet about any murder crime in the neighborhood. All these years she came to me, she did it for seeking help. She saw me as someone who could help her, someone who could help her cross over. She probably never got too close because she knew her rotting, negative aura would harm me. I was, and still am, very sensitive to energies. Dad came home next week. I didn't tell him everything, I just looked him in the eye and said, we need to perform a cleansing. He didn't ask any questions. That's how it is between Dad and I. No questions asked. A cleansing service was performed by a priest the next day on that plot of land which belonged to a distant relative of our old landlord couple. We did it after taking permission from the owner who surprisingly, well, not too surprisingly, just allowed without asking a single question as to why we wanted to do that. Lady in Black was never seen again. She crossed over. I could feel she was in a better place. The environment around the house suddenly felt a lot more lighter and positive. I moved out of my parents' house in early 2016. My parents moved out of that house by mid-2016. The empty plot of land was sold. The new owner decided to build a house on that property. Guess what was found while digging up the ground for laying the foundation? A human skeleton. To date, 
what happened to me yesterday on November the 18th, 2018, was the strangest and most peculiar thing I have witnessed, and really I don't know what to make of it. I live in a very small town of a thousand in southwest Michigan. I'm not from here, but moved out here a couple of years ago from a bigger town about an hour away. I was out with some friends catching up with some dinner at Applebee's, and at about ten we all departed in our separate ways. It's about an hour and a half drive back to my place, and I'm used to driving it and driving at dark and all that because of my job. Anyways, to get to what I saw, I rolled into my town at about 11.30, and the town is dead quiet at this point like it usually is. Now there's one major crossroad in town that has, if you're coming into town, a small restaurant and a gas station on the left, and parallel is a library and a second gas station. I was just coming up to this crossroad, and I'm not gonna lie, I was looking at my phone, changing a song, when out of the corner of my eye, I see something move from out of the street by the restaurant. I slam on my brakes, and to what I believe I saw was a man on stilts. Except these were some exceptional stilts because, if I had to guess, he was about 15 feet tall. He took one stride and looked at me. This is where it gets even stranger to me. He was wearing a black and white checkered tailored suit jacket with grey dress pants, aviator sunglasses, and a top hat. Now I've seen people on stilts before and their arms are always normal size, but this guy's arms were just about down to his knees like a proportional being. He then took two more strides and was out of sight behind the library. I then pulled up and grabbed my phone to get a picture of this guy, but he was gone. I turned down the street to try to find him, but looking down the alleyways and local streets, I couldn't find him. I'm absolutely baffled by this incident. I want to believe that it was just some dude pulling off a rather impressive cosplay, but something seems so off about it. The entire encounter was maybe four to five seconds long, but I remember it so vividly. I haven't told anyone about this, and really, posting it here is my best chance to possibly get an understanding, or maybe someone else who has seen something similar. So everything started at my birth. I was a healthy boy, really nice and popular with my parents' friends. My mom, who was keen on paranormal too, once knew a psychic, and the first time she saw me, she was totally dumbstruck. My mom asked why she would react like that, but the only answer my mom got was, he's not normal. Then she left my mom speechless and never gave a sign of life again. Around two years old, I started to talk about friends, even though I barely knew children my age at the time. I was telling my parents that they used to talk to me at the end of my bed at nap or at night. Moreover, my parents would very often hear me speak alone in the room, sometimes in another language. My whole childhood was focused on paranormal. I was only talking about ghosts and video games with my friends, and I would usually love making them incredibly scared. Sadly... People were not really kind to me in general, so I never really had many friends until middle school. I don't remember seeing ghosts, but waking up in the middle of the night and hearing people talk to me was a daily routine. It was first scary, but I got used to it. I would often hear footsteps in the hallway, even though nobody was awake. I talked about these things with my parents and they believed me. They told me that there are things in this world that we can't explain and can't see, but they're still here and some people would see them and help. They told me they thought I was one of those people. I was astonished, but I loved it. Once my sister was born, I was five years old at this point, things became less extreme. I would not usually see or have signs of my friends again, but because we have a tiny house, my sister and I were sleeping in the same room, and so my sister would be less scared. Everything was normal, but one night I jumped up out of my bed, and because of the glow of the moon, I looked at the mirror between our two beds and noticed this dark-shaped figure at the end of my sister's bed's reflection. It was crooked, incredibly scary, but wasn't one of my friends. I frantically put the light on and it disappeared, but knew it was still a matter of time before it came back. Later, during my teen years, I would sometimes go to sleep last. You know, my house is somehow scary, and this night I was not feeling comfortable. Something was really strange and eerie. 
In a dead silence, something threw a sellotape violently for no reason. I went to bed. That also was scary, but things were not happening only at home. I went to my ex's house, a very spooky house too, and we were talking about life and friends. Randomly, I looked at the see-through curtain and saw a crooked, scary, and evil-looking woman looking back at me. I don't really know how to explain it, but it was all really fast. I leapt and unconsciously started to cry. This was so real. It was like material and immaterial at the same time. I barely slept that night. I never had the evidence that my house or my land was haunted, but I'm the only one that thought strongly that we were not alone here. I can't explain everything, but sometimes things happen around me in my house. My neighbors, who are really unlucky people, recently forged bonds with a psychic. They invited her at their home, but the first impression she had was, You're not alone here. My neighbor, speechless, asked what this meant. Their friend answered, You are not alone in here. I can see two children and a grandmother. The grandmother is not very kindly, as she died during World War II. The children are here since maybe the Middle Ages. This is unbelievable how this matched with what I witnessed all my life. My friends, two brothers, the grandma, aka the scary and evil woman I felt and saw many times. I'd like to preface this by saying that this is not my encounter, but my great aunt's encounter. She told this story to me a few years back after many years of me pestering her about it. I had grown up knowing vague details of this story, but never the full thing. I did record this entire conversation that we had, amongst my great aunt, a few other members of my family, and myself. To this day, I still have the recording on my phone, and will find a way to post it if there is enough interest. I'll be transcribing the exact conversation we had with slight changes to the names for privacy. When David and I were younger and before we got married and even afterwards, we had a Ouija board at our house, and we think that this might have been the cause of everything that came after. Anyways, we used to play the Ouija board all the time, and one night when we got married, we moved into this mobile home down the road, further down from where we are now, in Canada. Michael was born, but he was only about a year or so old, and Billy Joe was a baby. So Trisha, this is my aunt's sister, had a boyfriend named Brian Langle. One day I came home from work, and the very first day I had this brand new job at MSI, and the babysitter had told me that Brian had been there that day, and that he really wanted to see me, and that it was important. I tried to call, but there was no answer. I tried and tried, but there was no answer. So, I thought to myself, if it's really important, you know, he'll come back. Well, he shot himself. He went home that day and shot himself. Of course, my question was, what did he want me for? Why did he want to see me? About a year later, we got the Ouija board out. We were having a party, you know, young and stupid. We were only about 18 or 19 years old at the time, so I asked the Ouija board with two other people doing it, what did Brian Langle want to see me about that day? He came back and said his name was Link, which was Brian Langle's nickname, L-Y-N-K. It was Jesse and Gary that were working it, and I said, what did he want to see me about? And he said he wanted to tell me that he had caught David and Trisha kissing each other at the shack. David and I were already married, so there was denial and whatever, but it turns out it was true. That's exactly what had happened. He had caught them kissing each other, and that's why he broke up with Trisha. And that's all that he wanted to see me about. So that's just a prelude to the story, because from that point on, our lives changed. Within a couple of weeks, Michael started seeing an imaginary friend. When Michael got old enough to talk, he would say stuff like, Can I go out and play? Barda was out there waiting for me. He started throwing his toys out the front window of the trailer, and we'd get up and they'd all be gone. Everything in the room would be gone out the window. We'd ask, why did you do that? He'd say, well, Bardo made him do it. So, you know, what do we do about it? But we couldn't do anything because we thought Bardo was imaginary. So then Billy Joe gets old enough to talk, and he's really scared of everything. 
He was scared of his shadow. He clung to me, and for most of his life he slept on my chest until he was about ten. This created laughter amongst my family for obvious reasons. One night he kept saying that he was seeing this person in his closet, and it was a mobile home, right? So the closet is tiny, and so was the bedroom. David and I were laying in bed. It was a summer night, and Billy Joe said, Mom, he's bothering me. I said, just go to sleep, honey. It's okay, go to sleep. Then we heard talking through the walls, you know, chattering with someone, but not loud enough to hear the words, like a child's voice heard softly through really thin walls. And then we heard a response. A deep voice, low and guttural, answered him back. Terrified in disbelief, I said, Billy Joe, run to mommy, baby. So we did. He came running. Then he would go get Michael because he was in the next room down. I was terrified and so was David. David was so terrified he wouldn't even get out of the bed to go get Michael. David kept Billy Joe with him and I had to go get Michael. We actually didn't move that next day. It was then that we started saying, Okay, what did you see? Who is it? And blah 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 and come to find out. They, both boys, saw him started explaining things. He was a little man. His name was Bardo. He wore a banner across his chest and it said Bardo on it. Though at the time we didn't know it said anything, just that they described this ribbon going across his chest with three letters on it. He was always in the backyard trying to get them both to come out. So then we moved and about three years later they started putting videos on TV. It was a Thursday night show. Michael Jackson was the first video that we had ever saw, his 1983 thriller. In one of his videos we were sitting there watching and one of the subliminal messages that he was putting in his video, he was trying to make fun of the exorcist. It was this little man. He was about three feet tall, a little gremlin, and there was a banner across his chest that said, Bardo on it. We thought, holy sweet Jesus, that's him. David came home and we just kept watching because we didn't have a VCR. There was no such thing as a VCR so there was no way to see it unless we just kept waiting for them to put the video on again. David saw it and we walked about and chalked it up to coincidence so as not to scare the boys. Now, when David was little, he used to see someone he called the Spring Man. He was absolutely terrified of him and had experiences with the Spring Man as a child that were similar to the experiences the boy did with Bardo only a couple of years before. So we were watching a Stephen King movie one night and it was about a man that was scared to death to get on a plane. Well this plane started doing the whole shaky shaky thing with turbulence. It was storming out and the guy looks out the window and there was Bardo on the wing of the plane only without the banner this time. At this point my aunt gets into a discussion about this show and they realize it was not a Stephen King movie but in fact The Twilight Zone is the scene with the gremlin on the wing of the plane. Look it up in Google to see pictures. It's a pretty good skit. It was at this point that David pipes up and says, That's the spring man. So not only had David seen him as a child, but so had the boys, his kids. That was all I could get out of her on the subject, which was more than enough for me. I looked up the picture of the gremlin from the scene in the Twilight Zone and it brought my aunt to tears. They are still very much afraid of these experiences. There were many more, but were not mentioned by her in the story. Even Billy Joe, who's 40 years old today, refuses to acknowledge or talk about any of these experiences. Last July, I had gone out shopping with my mom and my youngest son while my oldest son was at day camp. After we were done shopping, we stopped at the rec center to pick up my son from his camp because it was on the way to my house. I got out of the car and walked about halfway to the front door and was drawn to look back at the car, and when I did, I saw my grandmother seated in the passenger seat next to my mother, her daughter, clad in what looked like a paper gown and looked disapprovingly at my mother. I could see her as clearly as if though she was there in the flesh despite the fact that she had passed away two years prior. She didn't look see-through at all, and I got a view because I had left my window rolled down. 
I looked away and looked back and she was still there but now looking straight at me. I got really freaked out and sprinted inside and picked up my son. We came out a couple of minutes later and she had vanished. I got in the car and told my mom about what I had seen and she didn't really say much. I think she thought I was making it up. I got home and moved on with my day. A couple of hours later I was watching a movie and the phone rang. It was someone from the hospital calling. My mom had apparently left my house after dropping me off, headed out to the city and on the highway to meet her boyfriend at a small restaurant on the lake for dinner and blew through a red light and collided with another vehicle at the intersection who happened to be going 110 kilometers in a 60. My mom was okay thankfully after staying with me for a couple of months while she got back up on her feet because she did break her right leg. Because of all the chaos, it wasn't even till a day or two later when I took her to an appointment at the fracture clinic that she brought up seeing my grandmother immediately before her accident and that we both got really creeped out. Do you all agree that she was there to warn us? If I ever see her like that again, I will be really walking on eggshells for a few days. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.